Now, if you were to hear the words Art Nelly Fakes and Ecarf in regular conversation, then you might assume these were new upcoming um, slang terms. But words like these are part of an old, old slang language called Polari. Manchester-based artists Jez Dolan and Joseph Richardson have uh, teamed up with the language professor Paul Baker to revive the secret language of Polari in an upcoming exhibition at Manchester's John Ridden Library. Hi guys, thanks for coming in. Thank Hello. Yeah. So, what is Polari? Polari, where should we start? It's uh, <laughs> it, not quite a language, uh, but it's more than a slang. Uh, the correct name is probably a sociolect, but it was uh, a way that gay people, but not purely gay people, would use to have a conversation with somebody else, but um, disguise what they were talking about um, when homosexuality was illegal, uh, so that it was a way that we could communicate without somebody else hearing what you were talking about, or at fear of uh, attack or arrest. And do we actually know where it originated from? Yeah, yeah, it's got a really, really long um, etymology and history and uh, I think you mentioned Paul Baker earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul is a professor of linguistics at Lancaster and he, uh, he's researched uh, Polari for his PhD about, I think, about 12 years ago maybe. Um, and uh, so it can be traced back to as far as the Norman conquest, so in the 11th century. So some people, some people kind of think, oh, it was invented by Kenneth Williams in the 1960s, but it does go as far back as the 11th century. Does it have any other sort of influences from different cultures? And yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, it, what, what's interesting about Polari is it's, it's really f a British um, phenomenon, but it's, it's informed by oh, okay. lots of yeah. ways of immigration to the country. So there's lots of Yiddish words in there, and there's lots of this thing called Parliari, which was kind of Italian. Parliari? Yeah. It's, is that maybe why it's called Polari? Just like yeah, a, yeah. A sort of twist on yeah. it. Okay. Mm. That, that was brought by Italian kind of performers that used to travel around. and. In, in fact, uh, they were the people that brought with them the Punch and jo Judy show to England. Something okay. that's seen as a really British thing was actually brought by Italians. So, mm. so why have you chosen Pilar to be the focal point of the exhibition? Well, it's a really interesting uh, thread to follow through uh, gay LGBT history. Um, you can pick any of the words out of the dictionary and kind of follow them back to a historical route, you know, why, why did, why, who was using it, why did that become part of what Polari is, um, and you can sort of talk about the times of, of, of around that time, what was going on. Joe, Joe originally came up with the idea of doing an app, a Polari app for the iPhone, oh, wow. uh, and, and Joe and I were introduced by uh, a mutual friend, and we started a conversation that's still, that's still continuing, and the, the project em emerged out of that really, so the app for the iPhone was the starting point. And um, the exhibition is called the Polari Mission. So, what is the goal of this exhibition? Well, I think we one of the things that we, we we discovered when we were first started talking is that nobody knows about it. Well, not nobody, but very few people very, yeah. know yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, maybe gay people over the age of thirty-five, forty might know a bit of it. Um, if you were working the theatre, you might know a bit of it. If people who work in circus or fairground might know a bit of it, but it's a slightly different version of it. And, um, and that's because terms like those were used um, back in the days of past in those sorts of um, different professions. That's right, okay, yeah, 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 exactly. So um, one, of the, one of the things that we found out is that Cambridge University have an endangered languages department and uh, they have a top 10 list of world endangered languages and Polari is in the top 10. So Joe and I in, in our discussions went, right, we're going to save it. And what um, number is it? Oh, uh, I can't recall, <laughs> I'm afraid. Number one? No. Pro probably not, no. no. It's a mass tech language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe so. Yeah. OK, um, so how is the exhibition hoping to um, revive Polari? I think it's it partly it's about getting people to talk about it uh, rather than anything else. I yeah, think talk about it more than, talk than speak it. I mean, in, in reality, the likelihood of it actually being used it today is really is really l low because obviously there aren't the same there isn't the same need to disguise in the in the same way you know there, there aren't the same legal restrictions or the same amount of discrimination so um, it, it's more kind of to get people to talk about it as Jay was saying rather yeah. than to speak it mm. yeah sure yeah. So what can the public expect to see at the Polari Mission exhibition? Oh, uh, well, what well, indeed, yes, yeah. To um, it's going to be a mixture of, because the, the project itself uh, has lots of different elements in it. So, for instance, Joe at the moment is doing a lot of work with oral history 
interviewing and collecting. So interview, we, we've, we've put a call out to people, and it's still there, people can, people can join in and participate, for people to come and be interviewed and talk about their knowledge of Polari, whether they know a lot about it or nothing about it, or where they, where they heard it being used, whether, whether it was part of their experience as coming out, um, whether they know nothing about it and thinking about it as a part of LGBT heritage. And LGBT stands for, just to clarify. Uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Okay, yeah. yeah. And is there any particular demographic you're hoping to attract with the exhibition? Um, I think all, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As Jace was saying, in terms of um, w w we want to um, interview people as part of the project because people who did used to speak it, uh, there were very few um, people left alive actually today who, who, who would have used it in a, in a regular uh, part of their conversation. Um, but yeah, we want to talk to anybody who's interested in Polari for, for those I interviews. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's for everybody really. And it's not just for gay people because it, obviously, like I said, it's, it's uh, it, it being informed by immigration. There's kind of a really, uh, it's a good route into kind of British yeah. history in general. Mm. Like it, you can look at Polari as a way of uh, sort of reflecting out and kind of seeing what was going on around that time for um, other straight people as well. So how did you first hear about, about Polari back in the day? How it came from a, a project that Joe, well, I'd, I'd heard about it years ago, um, primarily from um, a radio programme in the 1960s called Round the Horn. Yes, okay. Um, yeah. where that's where most yeah. people, if they know anything about it, will know it from. Uh, and each week, uh, Round the Horn was the, it was the, um, most popular radio program at the time, so mm -hmm. it had something like nine million listeners wow, okay. in the mid '60s. That was that was huge. Great, and each week there was a slot um, uh, with Julian and Sandy, played by Kenneth uh, Williams Kenneth and Hugh Williams Paddock. Okay. Sure. Yeah, okay. and each week was a, a kind of fairly standard little kind of two three minute sketch. And Julian and Sandy were were kind of resting actors, and Mr. Horn, the presenter, would come in and find them at their wherever. So. The word boner, yeah. is, which means good yeah. or nice. So each episode was called boner something. So boner bookshop or yeah. boner sea dogs or boner travel. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so that's, that's, where, that's where I first heard it, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, and I think most people would be the same, really. Excellent. Just think, just uh, just saying that we've not actually said any of it yet today. So no, we, we haven't. Probably You've got to actually, I'm um, coming up. I've oh. actually printed off <laughs> a whole are list. We, of are, we are we going to be tested? Testing things. Yeah. Oh, right. Hold on to your seats, just uh, there. So has the use of Polari changed as time's gone by? The meanings of words changed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like any language. It, it grows and develops and changes and moves around. And as, as I said, it's, you know, it goes back to the 11th century. And it, 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 one of the things it really emerges from is something called thieves' cant, oh, okay. which is kind of around the 16th century. Is that to do with um, sailors? Or? Um, thieves. Yeah, th okay. the underworld. So, so um, the, it was a way of thieves, criminals, to communicate with each other. But not like necessarily homosexual thieves. No, 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 just, just okay. general, yeah. So um, it was a kind of technical language. So, for instance, the word cheat was used a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, nubbing cheat, for instance, which means gallows. Right, okay. Um, cheat meaning thing that does without wanting to get too technical, but it kind of emerges from then. And then the so different... You have, you have uh, nubbing cheat, but then m ones that they'll recognise uh, more. Um, hearing cheat, could you guess what that... Hazard a guess what that Hearing be? cheat. Um, someone who isn't deaf is a cheater? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so... <laughs> ears. Okay. Ears. Oh, hearing oh, cheat, okay. thing which does, thing which hears, okay. ears. Mm. All right, can we it's test you then on the Okay. Uh, right, Tom, you okay, well, I've got a little list for you now. So <laughs> I said in the link before, aren't Nelly fakes? Earrings. Earrings. Correct. Yes. E calf. Is that how you pronounce it? E calf. E calf. Face. Okay. Fruit. I think that would just mean. G gay. 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 Okay. Gay. Okay. Person. What about basket? Ah. Are we allowed to say oh. that? I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could mean the same as package. Okay. Yep. We have to be <laughs> careful. We do have to be. <laughs> yeah. It isn't past the watershed yet. It's only yeah. seven six seven okay. in the yeah. morning. Yeah. Well, yeah. mince. That's more of a. Mince. Ah, yes. Mince. Walk. Walk. Okay. Mincing around, like yeah, around. Big mincing, you know, that yeah. Yeah. Sort of yeah. mincing around. Yeah, mincing around. What about bijou? Bijou. Well, it, could, it actually means little, Small, but it could yeah. mean lovely, yeah. nice, charming. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's interesting because in French, um, bijou means um, jewelry. It in, does. Um, yeah, slang. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so maybe some like French influences have been lots, involved lots there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Hoofer. 
dancer. Okay, that makes sense. There's a, there's a lot yeah. of theatre terms in it, or there's a lot of crossover between Polari and theatre. Sure. Okay. Strangely gay people working in the theatre. Who'd have thought? I know. Yeah. Unbelievable. Isn't it just? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, so um, Jez, so what sort of exhibitions have you, um, you know, created before? And how have and how have those um, exhibitions influenced your Polari mission? Um, I mean, I've, I've got a really varied background before really focusing on my own kind of visual art practice. So I've done performance, I've done big outdoor street festivals, I've done small scale interventions. Uh, the last couple of years, I've been focusing on my own studio based practice. So um, working with you know, pop-up galleries or mm -hmm. temperate galleries or touring galleries, uh, group shows, a uh, really wide range of work. Excellent. And just before we um, finish the interview, um, when is the Polari project and how can people get involved? Well, it's ongoing now. Um, we've been working together for oh, about 18 months. And it's at the John Williams Library in Manchester. Yeah, the, right. the, the exhibition will open in August and run till January 2014. We have a major conference planned for October this year, okay. uh, but there's loads of opportunities for people to get involved in oral history work or interviews or practical art making, um, a whole range of stuff. And anyone can go down and get yeah, involved. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Can we leave so you with a phrase? It, sorry? Can we leave you with a phrase before you finish? I think you we ought to. Yes, yeah. of course you can. <laughs> okay, so the main one that most people will know is Bona Tavardi or Dolly Oldeek. Bona Tavardio Dolly Oldeek. Bo Bona Nearly. Bona Tavarda. <laughs> Bona Tavarda. Your Dolly Old Eek. Your, your dolly o old old eek. eek. Okay, maybe you can write that down for me and I can learn <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's nice to see your lovely face. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank or you. Or higher. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys, for coming in. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers.